Hi, this is Chris Cast, episode eight. I was a teenage Russian troll. This is an audio version of an article I wrote for the Biznology blog back on December 19th, 2017. And I'd like to read it to you now, and I will add parentheticals and see if there's anything at the end that I want to explain. And then feel free to listen and call in, <clears throat> leave voicemails, make comments, etc. All anyone is talking about these days is how armies of Russian trolls got Donald Trump elected president of the United States. They did this apparently through unique uh, through a unique witchcraft and voodoo that normal mortals cannot resist. How did Vladimir Putin and his malignant web brigades so easily, cheap, cheaply, effortlessly, quickly, and effectively puppet master our innocent, vulnerable, and naive online American yokel brains into becoming mindless hordes of racist, sexist, nationalist, Nazi deplorables. Russia isn't the only country that's leveraging highly trained covert operatives with bomb-proof non-disclosure agreements to sneak around online in deep cover, pretending to be other people, genders, ages, and emulating the interests, hungers, passions, fears, dreams, and goals of online communities that could really benefit the agendas of their clients. Okay, okay, okay. I wasn't actually either teenager or Russian when I was an OG Russian troll and part of the Russian troll army. In my early and mid-30s, I worked for New Media Strategies, known as NMS, I sat in an open plan room occupying a former newsroom, spending all my days in Roslyn, Northern Virginia, right outside of D.C., undercover, marketing on behalf of Sci-Fi Channel, now Siffy, Buena Vista, now Disney, Tom Tom, Paramount Pictures, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Disney, Reebok, EA, RCA, and NBC, and that was just me, from 2002 to 2006. If you hired NMS, you hired the best. Everyone was smart, capable, savvy, clever, so discreet, and had world-class situational awareness and communication skills. And they followed orders. Those were the good old days of paid trolling. I was part of a super discreet, amazingly effective, super covert mercenary troll army that lived and worked out of two floors of Roslyn Twin Tower 2 in Arlington, Virginia, the United States, called New Media Strategies. While I was employee 13, NMS topped out somewhere north of 120 employees, all of whom were exhaustively trained to promote and protect brands, Companies, media networks, movies, shows, series, games, politicians, sports teams, political issues, and anything else that would plausibly be helped by a crack team of millennials and digital natives who are trained with such rigor and held to such standards of discretion and secrecy that it actually felt like I was going through some sort of social media marketing boot camp held by the FBI Training Academy Academy in Quantico.
But no, it wasn't Quantico. However, the training was extensive, expensive, and lasted months. I am certain that the reason why NMS was born in Washington, D.C. to Pete Snyder was because D.C. is the only city where secret keeping and to the deathbed discretion is in our DNA. Other folks from other cities are all about building their own personal brand in the back of their employer. DC is not like that. What we did was called word of mouth marketing. We fed exclusive info from our clients uh, and back channeled uh, them in it into conversations that were already happening. We spent all day, every day, becoming essential parts of these online communities. I was routinely offered administrative and moderator rights. Rather, my noms de guerre were. Because message boards live and die by post count when it comes to prestige and online power, it didn't hurt that we were spending quality time all day, every day, as long as our clients paid us and often between clients on sometimes relatively small but influential homespun online forums. There were times when we couldn't get conversations started that we would all pile into the conversation we needed happening for an upcoming report and we would chat with each other. Each time we posted anonymously on a message board, it was called a cyber strike or a strike for sure, for short. 80% of all cyber strikes were done in order to build trust in the community. Sometimes online identities would not start cyber striking on behalf of our clients for months, each one just becoming part of his or her community, sometimes communities. We would do this across message boards, forums, groups, news groups, and even the comment section of relevant, rel relevant blogs. I left during the summer of 2006 to join Edelman's elite digital public affairs team here in Washington, D.C., so I never got to see what happened in a Facebook and then Twitter world, but I'm pretty sure we didn't invest our time at all on Friendster or MySpace. While, while I was always a proponent of transparency, pitching bloggers and message board and forum owners on behalf of our very cool clients, that was never the company core though we did create many a blog and website posting as super fans. It was a secure culture. At first, we were just super careful. Getting burnt was not an option. Later, we implemented a hardware-based IP address anonymizing tool uh, anonymizer. Uh, it was an anonymizer appliance that li a black box that lived uh, in our server room. I think we also tried proxy servers to allow us to cyber strike from all corners of the world, which in many ways is what the anonymizer appliance did. No matter how much we ended up leaning on spy tech gear, it was more about faultlessly maintaining cover without making a mistake that would not only burn you, but burn three to 24 months of cultivation and would then probably burn other false names, other resources, and then probably burn back to our clients and even ourselves, new media strategy, which would, you know, torch our reputation as a company. If there was even a hint of witch, witch, or any remote hint of getting called out for astroturfing or not clearly and transparently representing who we were, uh, our true name, our true identity, and our paid by connection to a brand, political campaign, upcoming movie, or whatever, our entire newsroom full of trolls would be commanded to stop by our chief operating officer 
Log out of everything you're on right now and await further instructions. Everybody would put their pencils down, put their hands down, and everything would stop on a dime. At first, it was just one room, one giant newsroom, but then we saddled two floors. And when that happened, the entire room, both floors actually, would go silent. Brand managers would meet with the C-suite, and a very cautious step-by-step plan would be quickly, but completely developed before anyone was allowed anywhere near the site of the possible crime, including all other false name cyber striking characters that had at any point come in contact. And since online communities are very incestuous, this toxicity would assume to have spilled over and leached to other boards, groups and forums with shared topics and interests. I don't remember us necessarily making up memes But we did have several amazing graphic designers, so that's plausible. I mean, parenthetically, you know, I did some cool graphic stuff for TomTom. And I, you know, we had video capabilities, we had video editing capabilities, we had graphic designers, we had audio and podcasting capabilities. And I, um, I put together the first podcasting studio, which is cool. I do know that we would also plant, plant counter news counter ads and we totally stoke people up whenever their nosiness uh, could either push our client's agenda forward um, or hold our client's adversary adversary's agenda back so I mean we would I guess it's the equivalent of misinfo and disinfo counterintelligence counter information counter messaging Pretty powerful stuff. Um, anything to create deniability or to do what they're talking about uh, Russian trolls doing now, which is to make people not sure what the truth is, to kind of chaff and flare garbage up, uh, dirt up, dust up, um, mud up, murky up the, the actual truth. And none of what we did, I did, at NMS required any special equipment. Anyone with an internet connection can do it, and anyone who can not only be discreet, but bring five, fifty, five hundred of their closest allies on board can do it. In fact, very few, very uh, influential platforms demand true names. Most message boards, forums, groups, especially Reddit and Wikipedia, do not demand you are who you say you are. And they're especially rightfully paranoid about it on about it on those two platforms. So you too could be a Russian troll. In fact, <clears throat> um, unless you're all in a room together, you don't really need proxy servers or IP anonymizers. Um, and doing something as simple as uh, having several really cheap Chromebooks or cheap laptops. Uh, and going from coffee shop to coffee shop all day long is enough to to make plausible uh, to make to make the IP address address change and all that kind of due diligence stuff plausibly deniable. Um, really, the tech is less important than just being discreet and smart and slow and careful. And you know, not not looking or sounding or feeling like a narc. You know what they say, right? If you are wear a cheap suit um, and drive a Crown Vic, you're probably a cop. As I said, it's true, you too could be a Russian troll. 
If the only barrier to entry into the world of becoming a Russian troll army is a connection to the internet, an internet-enabled device like a computer or smartphone, some smarts, some discretion, some fearlessness, possibly a shareable spreadsheet to track all your fake users, and where they've been and what they've done, some sort of proxy tool such as Tor, optional and maybe more trouble than it's worth, and balls, then why would Russia be especially good at this? Sure, they can speak some English, but I just came off of a four-month gig with Russians, and even the ones that swear to me that they studied Russia, uh, studied English in Russia, and even those who spend some time in California or New York, forget every single article and every single sentence. There's no way that Slavic people and Russian people have any ability to be as fluent as you really wish they could be. Um, you know, sure, Russians can speak a lot of English, but even native English speakers catch crap from making grammar mistakes. And, you know, after working with Russians for five, six months, man, um, in spoken English, it was really great, but writ written English, it was just the worst. Uh, I worked as an editor in a... Uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain newspaper called um, New Economy and it required my business partner Dan and me it required us to um, it required us it required us to do a lot of editing I'll tell you love those guys though amazing content amazing innovators but their English isn't as good as they think it is especially written I'm sure if Pete Snyder came up with this brilliant plan back in 1999, there must be an infinite number of little newsrooms around the USA, Canada, and the world. Some persistent and possibly part of the State Department, Homeland Security, the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, as well as some ad hoc based on a passing need or an upcoming election. Though I must hand it to Peter Snyder for coming up with marketing strategies and tactics that compelled me to ditch a decade of high-level technology for a junior gig at NMS. It's not rocket science, and I am sure versions of it are being played out discreetly, elegantly, and effectively right now, no matter how publicly against it WOMA professes to be. I loved working at and for New Media Strategies from 2002 to 2006, from 32 to 36 years old. Compared to my colleagues who were 22 to 26, I was long in the tooth and not remotely a teenage troll. What I was was part of a very smart, elite, highly trained, internet native team of online covert operatives who spent long hours of our micromanaged time anonymously sneaking around message boards and online forums under the protection of false names, nom de plume, nom de guerre. I freaking loved it. But I don't do it anymore. I haven't at all since I left NMS in 2006, and I don't even know if NMS continued doing it themselves since there was a lot of heat from the FTC and organizations like WOMA, PRSA, and the lot to not astroturf or misrepresent oneself. They were bought by Meredith Corporation, which purports itself to be um, uh, a magazine publisher, but who knows what, um, what it does now. I think it's got a cool, sexy new name. To me, things like that just mean agencies like NMS just go deeper, darker, maybe more covert, and definitely offshore. All I know is spying is here for good. There's too much money to be made in spycraft, both in online analysis and also in online field operations to ever actually stop 
take off the mask, reveal the true nature of one's agenda and intent. Keep calm and carry on isn't effective in the game of hearts and minds war. And since I am not even remotely in that world anymore, all of my company all my company does is pitch online influencers with brand information and products and expect that a good number of them will come back with interest and be good and willing to share and review. I don't know what the current landscape is. I only know it does work as well as everyone is saying with the Russian troll armies. My point with this post is is to suggest that the Russians aren't remotely alone. I might even add that 80% plus of what is being blamed on these Russian troll armies could very well be anyone. Private PR and public affairs agencies, Hill and Knowlton, Edelman, Ogilvy, communications companies, government contractors, the military, the intelligence community, the State Department, the RNC, the DNC, PACs, super PACs, NGOs, foundations, clubs, or even the pure unrestrained hubris of multimillionaires and billionaires. I'm I'm talking at you, Soros, Koch, Murdoch. Oh my. So I say again, 12 plus colleagues and I were our teenage Russian troll OGs, original gangsters. We might have been the first, but we're certainly not the last. I'm going to do some shilling right now. If you like what I said, think you'd want to hire a savvy cat like me, feel free to own the yacht, but hire a crew if you're not yet seaworthy. If you get my drift and want to adopt the yachting lifestyle yourself, but either don't have the mad sailing skills, don't yet possess a world-class crew, and don't know yet where to go, then you should give me a call or reach out to me by email. So I can help you pilot your vessel now in the tranquil blue-green shallows of the Caribbean, as well as in the roughest seas and into, as well as out of, the storm. If you'd like to chat more, call me at 202-352-5051 or email me at chris at abraham.su or, you know, go to Calendly slash Chris Abraham and you can schedule a call with me. This is Chris Cast. My name is Chris Abraham. I make this cast as often and whenever I feel the muse, whenever I feel inspired, like like a Quaker uh, meeting. When I have, when I feel <clears throat> the Holy Spirit coming through to me, I do a Chris Cast. You can reach me at Chris Abraham. You can reach me, www.abraham.su. Also, uh, chrisabraham.com is the longer form. Like I said, you can also text me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one, And my anchor uh, site is anchor.fm slash chrisabraham. On Twitter, you can contact me at chrisabraham, at Facebook at chrisabraham, which is my personal profile. And also on YouTube, where I will cross post this at Chris Abraham. My channel is Chris Abraham, all one word. I really enjoyed sharing this with you. I hope I wasn't too stilted. I hope um, I intrigued you and made you believe that probably, if a meme is any good, it probably was done on Madison Avenue. That's something I really should have said. If a meme is freaking awesome, it was probably done by an ad man. Um, anyway, don't forget to subscribe and thumb up, uh, or give me a thumbs up or a plus or an upvote or some love. There's a way you can subscribe to me, pay me some money or give me a tip. Um, and I also blog and have a company named Garris Corp, G E R R dot I S. So those are all the things you can do. And I appreciate you. And I can't wait to read you another blog post that I love, an evergreen one. Or um, do as the ASMR girls say, which is to do a ramble. 
I can, I can do a ramble for you. <clears throat> I was also considering doing a, an ASMR where I tap and clack on a uh, Glock 17 as a humorous kind of insight into the ASMR world. Sort of like a deplorable doing an ASMR. Anyway, lots of love. Hugs, not horns. Be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. Or is that be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. And uh, see you next time. Mahalo, Nui Loa, Aloha Kako, Ciao, Arrivederci, A Biento, A tout à l'heure, Ciao, Hasta luego, Hasta mañana, and Mahalo again.